Hello and welcome back to our survival series. In the last episode, we left off by making our building pieces and making more things interactable. Now we're going to keep going further with that by making our fire pit far more interactable as well, so we can open up a cooking interface for the game. So let's get started. Okay, so welcome back. Um, what we're going to be doing is adding our fire pit to our level. Now, obviously we've made it able to build the fire pit, but there may be options to in the future uh, place them in the world so at the moment the problem we have is if i place this fire pit in the world like this and hit play it's not actually there and the reason why it's not actually there is because the fire pit along with all the other building pieces if we go back to the root panel of this on the begin play these are set as preview material and it's waiting for it to be placed okay it's got to wait for it to be placed like this so what we're going to do is we're going to give an option to say like hey can should this thing be placed into the world without the player interacting with it so we're going to have a variable down here and we'll call it is placed in world and we're going to make this editable so take a little eyeball or take the little box on the right hand side here and with the variable we're going to go and begin play into this i'm going to drag this out get and put it into a branch so if it's true, we are going to call our place object. So let's call that. Like so. If it's false, nothing will happen. So now in the map, I can click on my fire pit and tick on is placed in world. So now we see in the world, oh, and we see the material hasn't been transferred through. But the fire is going, so we're halfway there. And it, yeah, the issue is on place object, we're using this Boolean as well to determine whether or not it, we are ready to be placed or not. So what I'm going to do is if I have placement, we're going to do an or Boolean. And we're putting our new Boolean in there as well. So it's either valid placement or it's already placed in the world. So I hit play. And there we go. There's our five bit. So we're going to make the fire pit now interactable. We want it to bring up a cooking menu and be able to cook food on it. <clears throat> okay. Uh, oh, what's this stuff? Remove from inventory. Ah, uh, yeah, that'd be the fire pit stuff. Um, so if we go back to the uh, the building system. Uh, da -da -da. Over here, we're doing spend resources. Now, we only want to spend resources if it's not placed in the world. So, get. Yeah. Put that in there and force spend resources to go into there. Let's just stop that error coming up. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so as I was saying, we're going to make the fire pit interactable so we can bring up a little cooking menu to cook food on it. So on the fire pit, we need to give this the interaction system. So go to your class settings, go to the interfaces and add the interact interface that we have. And this will add our two or multiple interface options down here that we've got use item, interact with, look at, all those various things here. And what we're going to do is we're going to do look at, double click on this, and this is the message we want it to say. So this will be um, cook. Then we also have to make sure this thing is set to interactive because our trace system is using interaction trace. So let's go to the mesh and we're going to go down to this collision settings. Customize and interactive block. So now I can walk up to this thing and it'll say cook. Perfect. So now we've got to do the interaction system to open up a menu. So let's go back to our UI folders and we're going to create a new folder in here for cooking. And we'll create a new user interface widget. And we'll call this the cooking interface. And we're not going to do a super complex cooking system. We'll do a very rudimentary one where the player can put in some items put and see a result come out um, by looking at a recipe list. So we've got to think about this. We're going to have a canvas panel. And that's going to help us organize our cooking screen. And then we're going to have a border. And what we're going to do is just simply just block out what our 
cooking menu is going to look like. So I want this to take up most of the left hand side of the screen, I think. So I'm going to do that. And we're going to do the offset from bottom to be zero. Actually, let's do the offsets. Let's do 100. 100. And also position it away from the border by 100 as well. There we go. And the size here will go out something like this. Let's do that. We have up to 800. There we go. So what I'm thinking of doing is we'll have the recipe and we'll have an image of the thing that you're going to be cooking. Um, and then you'll see what recipes you can cook. So I like that idea. So let's put in it an image, say, placeholder. Put in a chaos panel. And this we're going to put over here on the right-hand side. So I'm going to put this similarly anchored to the bar right here. So if I hold down Shift to Control and I click on it, it will move it over here. But the offset is going to be a little bit different. So the offset I still want to be 100 from the top. And the position in the X I want to be minus 100 to give it away from that wall. Um, but then I want to actually do... Actually, what might be better is making this inside a horizontal box. That actually might be a better option to do this. So I'm going to delete that and just right-click on my border and wrap that with a horizontal box. And the box here, we're going to do anchored to the whole entire screen, but with an offset in every single corner, 100, 100, 100. The ball down here, set to fill. Image is also set to fill. And you'll see it splits up like this. And we're also going to put in a spacer in between the two. And the spacer, I'm going to set the size here to 100. Okay, so that'll be our menu. This will be our image. And the image is actually going to be um the image plus a name made some stats a little description about the item we want to show whatever things we want it to be might be useful so this image we're going to wrap with a vertical box and then in that vertical box we're going to have a text field for the name of the item as you see that'd be like the name like cake for example and then we'll put another text field in for like a description Okay, I'll just change the size of that so it makes it clear that that's something different. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so that the text blocks here take up half of this height and the image takes up the other half. Now, we can't just say to this thing, fill the easiest way, because obviously that's a third for each one. So what you can do is wrap the text blocks here in their own vertical box. And the vertical box here is set to fill. And the image is also set to fill. And you get this sort of effect here. I'm going to add a bit of padding here to the items here. So vertical box padding at the top. I'm going to do 100 to pad that out. And the image here, we're going to also center align it like here. And just change the size of that. That'll do. Okay. Um, so we've got that screen. We also need the ability to close this window. So we need a button somewhere to close it. So let's put that button over here on the bottom of this screen of this border here. So this border, let's just change the color of that to be dark. There we go. And we're going to put in there a button. And also going to wrap this button here with a vertical box because what we're going to do is have this button at the bottom of the vertical box so this vertical box here is really spread out across the thing so above the button is going to be a list so it'll be a scroll list so we'll do a scroll box put it above the button and then you want a scroll box to fill the available space so it pushes the button down to the bottom and in that button we're going to put some text in here and we'll say close cooking menu. Something like that. Add a bit more padding around it. There we go. Cool. Okay. That's looking not too bad. Uh, and I say this is all placeholder. So when I'm here for building UI, I'll do, build a placeholder version, a wireframe version of the UI like this to make it easier for me to fill it in later on with gaps. 
So we want this window to show up when we interact with the fire pit and we want to close it when we click on this button. Seeing as we're already here, let's do the close menu button. So I'm going to go to the button, rename it, BTN, close. And then we go down to its clicked function. And we're going to tell this thing to remove from parent. When remove from parent is called, we want that to trigger the destruct event. And it's on here where we'll put the, like, changing the mouse input back, game input back, all those sort of things. So let's get the um, player controller. Set input mode to UI only. And set show mouse cursor to true. Uh, false, sorry. That should be game. Go the wrong way around. Uh, game only. There we go. Like that. Um, and we would do something similar on the construct event. So let's add a construct event. This time we're setting the input mode to UI only. And we're setting show mouse cursor to true. Like so. Cool. Okay, so now we've got that done. Let's go back to our fire pit and go to the interact with event. So double click on it in your interface at the bottom and you'll see it open up the event. And in here, we're going to tell it to open the widget. So create widget. Click in. And we're going to add to viewport. Okay, so let's take a look at that in game. And there's my viewport. Now, whenever we do an interface like this, it might be worthwhile to hide or even like diminish the player HUD bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually hide it. So to do that, they ignore this error. This is just because when we when we close the game, uh, it called the destruct here, and therefore player control doesn't exist because we just closed the game. If you want to stop that error of annoying you, you just do it is valid. It doesn't have an impact on the game, as it's only going to happen like in a situation like this. So if I want to hide all my interfaces, uh, UI stuff, we can, before we create this widget, is we can get and hide all of our widgets. So you'll find in here, um, we type in widget. <clears throat> and we'll get all widgets of class. And we're just going to get all the user widgets. And then for each one of these, we are going to set visibility to hidden. Okay, and when it's completed, we then add this widget on top. But it does mean we want to do this again when we close the widget. So let's go back to the cooking interface widget. And on a destruct, we're going to get all widgets of class again and make them visible. Okay. There we go. There we go. There you go. That is how you make a fire pit open up the cooking menu interface. This is obviously just step one in the process. In the next step, we're going to be adding our different ingredients and food and talking about how they're going to interact with each other in the cooking system. You can watch that next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. You can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribed and I'll see you all next time.